So who are you and uh, what do you do? I'm Curtis Tung, a co-founder and CMO of Umconnect. Okay. Now, um, what uh, can you describe your customer and um, the target markets that you're in? Sure, absolutely. Um, so our customers are anybody who uses energy, um, which is a pretty, pretty a good broad target. Okay. Um, more specifically, though, we, we do have a couple of uh, you know, specific verticals um, that we do go after. Um, so a couple of the requirements is, number one, they have to have a smart meter. Um, luckily, uh, especially here in the U.S., we've seen a pretty high penetration of smart meters. And two, they have to be in a deregulated energy market. Oh. Um, so aside from that, um, some of the additional kind of uh, more uh, kind of vertically demographic uh, you know, targeted customers, we, we do focus in on um, you know, early adopters, people who have a lot of Internet of Things, um, mm. and kind of more of a kind of an affinity for, um, for tech. So now, is this more on the consumer? Is it consumer IoT, or is it more um, industrial IoT, or both? Or? It's absolutely consumer uh, okay. consumer IoT. Okay. Yeah. Now, explain the deregulation, because uh, I, I don't I don't think I understand what sure. is that. What does that mean? Sure. Um, so it, it, so one of the um, kind of characteristics of these deregulated markets that makes what we do possible um, is that uh, capacity. Right, so like the availability of electricity yeah. it ha is compensated as generation on these deregulated markets. So from a policy standpoint, uh, when we bid in, so even though we're not bidding in electricity, we're bidding in capacity. And um, some federal mandates and state, uh, state policies have kind of put into place that capacity is equal to generation. So we found a really kind of novel and interesting way to offer market services that they see you know, our services equivalent as generation, even though we don't have any you know, infrastructure, we actually don't own any power plants. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, what, what would be the penetration of smart meters? Start with, um, I guess, the U.S., and then maybe sure. explain a little bit more. Sure. Um, so California, well, let's start with California. That's, that's kind of our first uh, you know, beachhead market. Mm -hmm. um, California, we have about 85 to 90 percent penetration of, uh, of smart meters. Um, so pretty, uh, pretty know, high saturation. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty much if, uh, if you don't have a you know, utility guy poking around your front yard, you reliably have a smart meter. Right. Um, across the U.S., it's definitely um, accelerating. I would, I don't have uh, definitive numbers, but if I were to take an estimate, I'd probably say the rest of the U.S. has about maybe 45 to 50 percent penetration. So it's still bad. definitely appreciable. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, the new deployments um, across new uh, municipal utilities and you know IOU utilities, um, you know, are rolling out you know monthly. So. Now, what about outside the U.S.? Are you focusing there, or do you know the numbers outside of the U.S.? Yeah, so outside the U.S. is probably a little less than, I mean, so the, un the United States has definitely kind of like led the charge from a smart metering infrastructure mm -hmm. standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little less. Um, and, but, but luckily, outside the U.S., there's a lot of um, uh, policy, a lot of energy policy that actually is really conducive for our business model. Mm. Um, and you know, it's obviously a little different, you know, for, you know, varies from country to country or state to state. Um, but it's, it's, it's definitely an opportunity that we're eyeing. Okay, all right. So what is it that you sell? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So we sell, uh, so from a, I guess you can kind of take a look at this from a kind of two different perspectives, right? So technically what we sell is capacity onto wholesale electricity markets. Capacity. Capacity okay. and wholesale energy markets, right? Okay. Um, capacity meaning not using electricity? Is that what capacity equals? Essentially, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and from a consumer standpoint, you know, we, the, the app that we offer, totally free to use. Um, so from a consumer standpoint, you know, we offer a platform for people to plug in their Internet of Things devices and offer them a ways to actually monetize that. Um, on top of that, you know, we offer some pretty cool energy analytics. So if anybody's interested in how their home's consuming, mm. um, where they're getting their energy from, um, and ultimately, you know, making some money um, mm -hmm. from uh, kind of optimizing their home's consumption of electricity, you know, that's what we offer to our end users. So you sell capacity to the, to the uh, utility companies, is that right? Indirectly, yes. Indirectly. Yeah. And you're selling what to the to the consumer then? To the consumer, it's really that value proposition. Mm. That um, so 15 percent. I mean, so again, this is from a wholesale electricity standpoint. Um, but from a wholesale standpoint, the electricity that we all use, 15 percent of our costs come from one percent of the time, right? I mean, so yeah, it, it's a really kind of asymmetric market. Mm. Um, so what we do is we capture that asymmetry, right? right? We capture there, there's inherent value in that asymmetry, and we deliver it directly back to our users. So the value proposition is that you know by modifying your electricity uses just one percent of the time, all right, it's a really right. small sliver um, right. sliver of the day. We're able to deliver back fifteen percent of that of like the value of their utility bill directly to our users. So does that mean they could? 
that's reduced? I mean, their utility bill goes down, or they get a money a check Well, so that, that's, that's the really cool part, is yeah. that, yes, their utility bill goes down, but it's really negligible. Like, it, it only goes down by you know, 1% if we're turning right. them down 1% of the time. Right. But we, OhmConnect, we're able to, we pay our users, right? So people log onto our platform, um, they cash out via PayPal, right? And they mm. cash out via PayPal about like 10 to 15% um, of what their utility bill ends up being on a monthly basis. Mm, right? Because we're able to generate that value through you know, optimizing and kind of crunching all the numbers um, from their home's electricity usage. Um, that we offer those as market services. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So, so your value proposition is a 10 to 15 percent reduction in electricity? In electricity well, that's, that's, the, that's the other. I mean, so that was kind of, it, it, it's a difficult um, thing from a marketing standpoint, right? Because a lot of people, when they initially hear about us, they mm. think it's savings on their utility bill. Yeah. But we don't necessarily work directly with utilities, right? Um, so, you know, our users, um, our users kind of see us as their home energy, you know, optimizer. Um, we, since we sell this capacity directly into the wholesale energy markets, you know, we're, we're the ones who are actually able to pay them directly. So it's not a reduction in their utility bill. Right. But it's, it's kind of semantics. It's kind of like, you know, just splitting a hair. But yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a definitely payment. interesting it's, distinction. It's like good behavior payment. Right. Yes, exactly. In a sense. Exactly. And kind of a, from a good behavior standpoint, you know, what we really do is, you know, we're, we're paying people to, you know, use more environmentally responsible power. Because at the end of the day, yeah. you know, what we're displacing are these really environmentally taxing and obviously really kind of expensive uh, peaker plants. Yeah. Right? And these right. peaker plants, um, they drive up you know, local electricity costs. Um, they you know, are pretty highly polluting. Um, and when people use our platform, you know, we essentially pay our users for not using electricity from those. Right. In a kind of roundabout way. Yeah, no, and, yeah. and I think from an environmental point of view, then that's valuable as well, just for people that care about that, which I think Absolutely. most people do. Absolutely. Mm. I mean, so, so like, uh, and again, kind of going back to the value proposition to our users, it's mm. kind of, it's, it's twofold. You know, so we definitely have that kind of financial motivation, right? But it goes hand in hand with that, you know, being kind of a, a, a good citizen. Right? It's like being environmentally responsible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we see a pretty, pretty significant kind of subset of our users coming to us um, so that they can have you know, a better idea as to where their energy is coming from, how they can improve that, and how ultimately they can kind of reduce their environmental impact. So now you were saying um, deregulation and smart meter and then IoT devices in the home. Now, mm -hmm. what, what devices, what, what does the consumer need in their home to be able to take advantage of this? Sure. Um, so. Really, the, the only thing that they necessarily need is either internet access to access email or a phone to get a text message. Right. So we make this as right. easy as possible okay. for so people no to internet use. internet of things plugged in washing machine or anything like that? Not right? necessary. Okay. It's not necessary. So just a smart meter is the interface and you don't need anything more than that? Smart meter, um, a phone, so they can get a text message, right? And it was kind of interesting because so we initially, the company started off as a behavioral, uh, as a behavioral kind of company. We we're trying to see how we can modify somebody's behavior using text yeah. messages and that sort of motivation. Right. Um, but a lot of our users, and kind of this goes back to that um, demographic subset uh, you know, of our users, which is the, um, they tend to have an affinity for tech. A lot of our users, they started to come to us and say, hey, I have all these devices already plugged in my home. They're all Wi-Fi controlled. Just automate this for me, right? Um, so then we kind of saw the opportunity. Okay, there is a huge, huge opportunity um, to you know, leverage all of these Internet of Things devices that are popping up in people's homes, right? Connecting those to our platform, and then you know, offering um, energy market services, you know, through through the optimization of of their um, of their use. I like it. I like yeah. it. So moving from the human being the interface to their devices to the internet being an interface to their devices if they have them and then you can ought, you can turn it off rather than telling them to turn it off exactly nice. exactly nice. All right. and we, we definitely give our users you know full control over it so like whenever we are going to turn something off so let's say you know we're turning off the charging to their electric car um, for maybe like 15 minutes mm. um, you know we, we send them a text message and yeah. an email saying hey we're going to be doing this Click on this link if you want to override it. So our users still have complete control over um, over all their devices. Now you can turn off the charging electric car simply from the smart meter. It's not necessarily from the smart meter, right? So the smart meter itself is so the devices that we control are behind the meter, mm -hmm. right? But we use the smart meter as a means to measure. 
kind of like what what impact we were able to make. Okay. Right. Got and so it's the smart meter that we okay. use to ultimately integrate interface with with the market. Mm -hmm. um, but we're directly um, kind of you know controlling you know these these actual devices. So, okay. So in the case of the of the smart car charging. Sure. This would need to be an Internet of Things smart charger. Yes. Otherwise, you're using the human disconnect. Exactly. But a lot of the car chargers that are starting to come to market. They're all, all Wi-Fi. They're right. all connected. Right. Um, so you connect so, yeah. them up to your home hub, and then you'll you'll connect it. You'll connect to it through yep. through that way. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. So let's get into the business model. Sure. Explain it. I think I'm getting. I, I think everyone listening is getting an idea. But maybe just take us through it. Sure, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, what OmConnect does is we aggregate this capacity, right, this, these load reductions, um, bid into the market. And that's, that's the really cool part is that um, the, these kind of energy markets, you know, they view us as a generator, right? They view us as yeah. a power plant. Yeah. And what we're able to do is we, uh, we aggregate um, so that we bid in bulk, right, because you have to reach a kind of, um, you have to have enough energy in order for the market to really, you know, care about, you know, what you're able to, able to deliver. Um, so what we've been into the market, um, we take a 20% cut for just operating costs, okay. um, then 80% goes directly back to our users. Okay. Um, so that, that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of the, of the business model. So pretty simple in the sense, and now the bidding, is that is that something that's automated? It's just a price for that day, and then you don't have any control there? Or are you actually working the market in some way also? Yeah, so um, we, we target um, prices. So I mean, the, the, the wholesale electricity market is a pretty volatile market. So typically, mm -hmm. it tends to be maybe like 40 to $50 per megawatt hour. Um, oftentimes, though, when those peaker plants I was talking about right. earlier, um, when those turn on, those can drive up like local marginal costs to maybe $600, $700, $800 per megawatt hour. Right? So wow. 20x increase. Wow. Extraordinarily volatile. Um, so really, the, the, the periods of time that we're targeting um, to get our users to reduce, you know, obviously, you know, we're, we're targeting those periods of time where you know costs or um, uh, wholesale costs are kind of elevated. Wow, I didn't realize. So that's what we're all paying, but it'll just be for that one percent of time. But we are paying potentially an eight x or, or whatever you were. Saying. It's interesting. I mean, so so we all pay a pretty you know standard yeah. flat rate right to the utilities, like you know thirteen cents a kilowatt hour or something like that, um, and so they bake in. So the utilities, they, they bake in, you know, mm -hmm. what, um, what all those, that variation kind of into that, um, into that, into that rate. Right. What we're doing is we're exposing our users um, to that, you know, wholesale kind of market transparency. And by, you know, making the markets more transparent, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're enabling our users to respond to actual wholesale prices. Um, so, yeah. Nice. All right. Well, um, tell our viewers uh, where can they find out more about uh, your company? Um, we can find out, or... Uh, viewers can find out more at uh, ohmconnect.com. Okay. Um, they can sign up there. Um, yeah. And they can sign up. It's a free. It's free to sign up and. Totally free to use. Absolutely. Just download an app to your phone. Um, so it's a it's a web app. Um, we'll okay. have, we have a mobile app that's coming out soon. Yep. Um, Android and iOS. Um, but for now, um, it's a it's a web app they can access at uh, www.ohmconnect.com. O h m c o n n e c t. Good clarification. O h m connect.com. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.